All right. So today uh, we are going to uh, learn a new thing. It's called a. St uh, it's kind. Of, it's a field in a, uh, theoretical physics. It's called a uh, uh, statistical mechanics. Statistical. Mechanics. Okay. So it, this is a field of theoretical physics, and it studies mechanical systems. So we have some. Uh, there are various uh, states possible, and then we want to analyze what those states are. And an important quantity that we will be interested. Quantity in statistical mechanics. Statistical mechanics is uh, a partition function. Partition function of a system. We, we are given a system, and then uh, when you have a system, there will be the partition function for that system. And roughly speaking. Uh, we will see some examples, but roughly speaking. Uh, the partition function of a system, function of a system, is basically a certain generating function. Uh, the generating function, generating function, for all possible states uh, with given weight. So we, for each state, we will have some weight associated to it with given weight. All right. And sometimes it's not all, so m most of the times it's difficult to compute the partition function. But some uh, nice examples, some nice models, it's possible to s compute the partition functions exactly. And in that case, we say that that is uh, uh, exactly solvable. That model is exactly solvable. And we will s see an example of such, such a model. So square eyes is uh, square eyes is an example of exactly solvable model. That means we can compute the partition function. We will compute that. Uh, solvable, solvable uh, models. All right, so what is our goal? So we are interested in the ASM conjecture. So we will prove ASM conjecture using the partition function of square eyes. Use the partition function of square eyes to prove the ASM conjecture. And in fact, we will prove uh, more general than that, and also. Uh, refined version of this, refined ASM conjecture as well. So let me uh, recall you the ASM conjecture. So ASM conjecture is the following. Number of n by n ASMs, alternating sign matrices of size n, equals the product. We know that the conjecture it's like this. So last time I mentioned that this was proved, first proved by Zeilberger using some combinatorics and um, constant term identities, but the proof was very complicated. So we will see an alternative proof of this using uh, statistical mechanics. 
And what is the definition of the ASM? It's a zero one. It's a matrix with entry zero one minus one, where ones and minus ones are alternating in each row, each column, right? And the row sum, column sums are all one. So it's easy to see that every in in an alternating sign matrix, there is ex there is a unique one in the first row that just follows easily f follows from the definition. So we can say that we, if you specify the num number of alternating sign matrices with one in the first row and in the rth column for a fixed R, we can also compute the number of such uh, alternating sign matrices. That is the refined version of alternating sign matrices. Conjecture. Refined ASM conjecture. Not only this, we, uh, we compute A n comma k, or let's say this is k. So this is the number of ASMs of size n, of course, with 1 in the position 1 comma k. In the first row, there is a unique 1, and we specify that that 1 is in the kth column. And this number also has nice formula like this. There is a, an equivalent version of this, but I'm going to tell you this way. So the point is that it also has a very nice product. So it's possible to prove uh, this, both. Actually, this one implies this. Because a n is a n plus 1 comma 1. So this is more general than uh, the ASM conjecture. If the first, so if one is in the first and the first column, this must be all zeros, and then you know this is an ASM of smaller size. So actually, this is more general than this. So of course, this is more difficult. But today we are going to pr prove this using scale rise and. Next week, uh, we will see how we can prove this. That's basically the uh, outline of today's lecture and the lecture next week. Okay. All right. Um, so, what is the scale rise? So. Right. It's also called a uh, six vertex model because it's more or less the same as six vertex model. I will tell you that m more later. Uh, I think I mentioned this earlier in this semester. Uh, we have these two ad two types of atoms, uh, oxygen and hydrogen. They are arranged like this: O H O H. There are five O's. In the second row, we have only H's, like this. In the third row, the same as the first. O's and H's are arranged in this fixed grid, like this. takes a little bit of time and H O H yeah, I think I took too big <laughs> example but let's see H O H O H but we all know we learned in chemistry class that uh, water molecule consists of one oxygen and two hydrogens, so H2O, right? So here, um, ice is basically water. We, so we will create, uh, so every uh, atom will be part of a water molecule. So, and a, a 
uh, oxygen is connected to two hydrogens adjacent, adjacent to it, right? So, so this is one such example. They are like bonded each other like this. Yeah. There are of course many many different ways. So this is an example of uh, scale ice. So scale ice is like this. H's and O's are arranged. Their locations are fixed, and all we need to do is to connect them so that each uh, water molecule has one oxygen, two hydrogens. Okay? Is it clear? You need more explanation? I think it's pretty clear <laughs> if you just look at this example. Okay, so now uh, what is the six vertex model? This is an equivalent version of this. Uh, let's see, I can let me uh, six vertex. Let's draw a six vertex model here. Six vertex model. So uh, we have. So basically, you change O's to dots. So we have one, two, three, four, five dots. So five by five grid. And for uh, for each uh, at each vertex, there will be four arrows uh, adjacent to it. Okay. So let me just draw. So these boundary arrows are fixed. So these are all coming uh, into the these dots and also coming into the dots. And these are going out like this. These edges or arrows are fixed. Now we, we, we're going to create edges, arrows here for each uh, adjacent uh, dots, there will be an arrow between them. And we ha must have one of these conditions. Uh, th we, we need to have this condition. At each vertex, there are two edges, two arrows coming in, and two edges going out. Right? At, at every vertex, two uh, has two incoming edges. Incoming arrows and two outgoing edges, arrows. So there are six possibilities, right? So maybe we have this or uh, this or this or this or uh, okay this and okay so we need there are, there are among four uh, edges we have to select two incoming edges so four choose two is six um, we, I, I, I list them like out of order, so okay. This I didn't list that thing, and also no, oh, uh, I already did that. Okay, let's focus on incoming edges. So incoming edges are. Like this, 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 this. So which one's missing? 
uh, this one, this. Huh? 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 So this is why it's called a six vertex model. At each vertex, there are six possible configurations if you look at that vertex locally. All right? So let me do that over here. But this is really the same as this. Because, you know, if you have uh, oxygen attached to uh, a hydrogen, this will be like this. Uh, H is not really representing a vertex, but this represents this arrow, right? So here, uh, H, so these are all H's, so we have uh, all uh, arrows, in incoming arrows. And here, uh, because H is connected to O, we will create like that. And this and this, okay? Do you see? And here, um, this one. Oh yeah, this. I think I made a mistake. So this one, for this, we have uh, in two incoming edges from the west and from the south, right? And for this, we have incoming edges from west and east. So it goes like this. It's like that. For this, uh, okay, let me just, for this, uh, what is that? this and this and for this this and this okay that way for this this and this and it's easy to see that they are in one-to-one one -one correspondence okay let me uh, complete this but or yeah, you know how to complete this right so just to save time I'm not gonna complete this but the idea is like that you just change this into this. Okay? I think I'm sure that you can complete this yourself. So scalarize is more or less the same as six vertex model. Oh, and these two are also more or less the same as alternating sign matrices. How? So ASM. The co correspondence goes like this. Uh, so in an alternating sign matrix, we have zeros, ones, and minus ones. And ones, so basically this molecule, horizontal molecule, order molecule, corresponds to one. And this corresponds to uh, this, this vertex. OK? And what about horizontal? This corresponds to minus one. And this corresponds to uh, incoming edges from vertical way, like that. And the other, other configurations correspond to zeros, right? OK, let me, let me draw, the, uh, erase this part and write down the uh, corresponding alternating sign matrix. So corresponding alternating sign matrix. Uh, so he, in the first row, we have a horizontal order molecule over here, so it's 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, right? In the second row, horizontal in the first, so 1, vertical, so minus 1, so the others, so 0, and here 1, and 0, okay? In the second, third row, 0, uh, 1, 0, minus 1, and, and 1. What about this? 0, 0, 0, and 1, 0. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, right? So they all correspond to each other. So one to one correspondence, right? Yonsan? 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 So okay, the question is, can we do some operation here? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe you can try to define some operations, but 
Yeah, not that I know that such, there is such an operation. But we will do something different. We will see, we will do some kind of operation on this diagram. Yeah. But that is different from the operation that we usually do in a matrix. Yeah, then you need to check. So it is not, it may not be clear right now how we get. So of course, this defi defines a matrix like that because we just did that. But does it, is it really clear that we really get ASM? But you need to think about this a little bit. But yeah, that is uh, indeed a bijection, and you can check that. Think about it. It's like uh, the bijection between ASM and <coughs> monotone, monotone triangles. You did that in homework. The description is quite simple, and proof is not that difficult, but you need to think a little bit about that. But the thing is, they're all uh, in bijection, and we will consider them really the same. So sometimes we will be working on this model, sometimes this, and sometimes this. Okay? So you should think of, you should remember this all. We will sometimes move around from one model to another. Other questions? Okay. Uh, right. Now, so because they are the same in one to one correspondence, number of ASMs is, of course, equal to number of uh, possible states in state square i's and number of possible states in six vertex model. So if you can enumerate those, then that just gives you the answer to the number of ASMs for here. But parti uh, the partition function is kind of generating function for this kind of object. So if you know the partition function, then that may give you some hint or the right answer to the number of ASMs. So, but before doing that, we need to define some weights. So these are models that uh, were studied by physicist and they already uh, studied this before ASM appeared. So we will see how they defined uh, weights. The weights of the states. How do we define the weights? So the partition function, so usually denoted by Z, capital Z. So the partition function, recall, partition function is a generating function, weight, weight, weight generating function. So we have weight. So we need to define weight first. So we define the weight of each state, each state. To be the product product of the weights of all molecules. So in the scale ice model, we have many, many, uh, many like n squared water molecules. And to each water molecule, we associate some weight. And the product of all the weights will be the weight of the state. Okay? So how, how do you define that? Before doing that, we're going to introduce two uh, variables. So these are variables. And notation, we will use this notation. This is different from Q integer. Z bracket Z means Z minus Z inverse, A minus A inverse. This will be defined like that. So we have auto molecule, and the weight corresponding weight will be like that. So H, so horizon, for horizontal uh, water molecule, we're going to assign weight Z. And for vertical water molecule, we're going to assign Z 
inverse. And okay, let me use this part. For water molecule of this or this, you're going to assign weight A, Z bracket. And for the remaining things, the weight will be Z. Okay? So why do we define this? Yeah, I didn't define this. <laughs> a physicist to be that. Maybe they need, they need to understand the structure of this scare eyes, and then probably this was the good description to, this is a good way to define weight to describe the scare eyes. But the point, the thing is, this is, uh, in, under this weight, the partition function is very nice. Maybe you, it's helpful to remember that it's horizontal, horizontal molecule has weight Z, vertical molecule has weight um, Z inverse, and these two are like, if uh, we have this direction or this direction, so they are really in the same direction. If uh, the bisectors of this line goes like this, then we have AZ, and the bisectors of these two line segment goes like this, then we have weight Z bracket, okay? So there are four different types of weights given, defined like that. So, and Z, capital Z N, uh, which is, which has two variables, a small Z and A, this is the sum of weights, the weight generating function over all possible states. On n by n lattice. Here, n by n lattice means the lattice where H's and O's are arranged, like I showed before. And we ha the arrangement of O's is like n by n. We have n by n n squared O's there. Okay. Uh, this will be just a general variable, Z and A. But we will substitute uh, some numbers there. It's like uh, generating function with two variables. You can think of this as generating function with two variables. Okay, so let me give you an example mm, because you, know, you need some time to digest this. So N equals 3. Yeah, already this takes some time, but we know there are seven alternating sign matrices. Let me, there are seven alternating sign matrices. So ASM equals seven. We can list them all. Uh, zero, one, zero, 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 one. But I'm not going to list them all, but some, part, some, some of them. So there are six permutation matrices, and the last one will be uh, this. 0, 1, 0, 1, minus 1, 1, 0, 1, minus, uh, 0. There are seven of them, right? And let's look at the corresponding uh, square eyes. So they look like this, right? And H, H, H. So, how are they connected? One means we have a horizontal uh, molecule. One here, horizontal, and horizontal. The remaining things are kind of fixed. So this, we have to connect like this. This is the only way so we have a motor molecule, so also here. And here also it's fixed. This one is also fixed. They are all fixed. They look a little, they may be a little different, but they are all fixed. It, once you fix ones and mi minus one. What about this? Uh, okay, you can do that. Let's do, let's compute this. Oh, 
H O H O H O H H O H O H O H Alright, so here, because of this one, we have a horizontal molecule and here horizontal molecule, vertical molecule, horizontal molecule, uh, horizontal molecule, and the remaining things have to be fixed like that. Okay? So, what is the weight of this? So the weight here, horizontal molecule has weight Z, right? So for, for this we have Z, and for this we have, what? Well, this is like this way, so what, what was the weight? Uh, Z, bracket Z. And on another bracket Z. Here, another one, another bracket Z. So, okay. Let me, let me. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six of them, right? Goes like that. Then what about this? We have one. Oh, yeah, I forgot this. The so three, three. C is clear because we have three uh, horizontal ones. So what about this? One, two, three, four horizontal molecules, C to the fourth. One vertical, so this is inverse. And this one, uh, direction is like this. So A is Z squared, right? For these two. And this and this is Z squared. In this way, you can compute them all. Then this will have uh, six terms, like one, two, three, four, five, and six. So Z3, capital Z, Z3 will be this. OK? Oh, we have one more, yeah, six, seven. But you can notice here that we have a Z uh, a cubed. Here, again, Z cubed. And every term has Z to the power of three, always. That's uh, not difficult to see. So in fact, Z3 can be factored like Z cubed, Z to the 6. If you compute the six, uh, the 7 uh, states and then compute their weight, and their sum will be like this. You can just do this for exercise. But you can notice, like I said, You can notice that they all have the common factor, Z cubed. In general, they always have Z to the N. Why? Just think about the number ones and minus ones, because they are the only ones giving uh, the power of Z. But, but we, we may have many ones and many uh, minus ones, but their difference is always fixed, because every column or every row, we have one more one than minus one, right? Because ones and minus ones are alternating. In each row, we have exactly one more one than minus one. That's why we, we always have this factor. Okay. So note, this is exactly what I said. This corresponds to ones in the the weight is. Z corresponds to minus 1 here weight equals Z inverse each row number of 1's equals number of minus 1's plus 1 always that means contribution of horizontal and vertical vertices or molecules is always z to the n. So the remaining things, are remaining molecules will give different weights. But these are fixed. Uh, and we, have, we will have some lemma. In a six vertex model, state in any any state of six vertex model 
number of our left arrows is always equal to the number of right arrows and number of up arrows is equal to number of down arrows proof will be left as a homework problem we will do this as a homework problem and proposition there's a, a corollary a easy consequence of this a number of uh, these molecules this type of molecules is equal to number of uh, this type of molecules and also Proof is not difficult. Okay, let's let's see a proof of this. Let we can say that this is a the number of this is b and c and d. Then what happens? So it's proof. Because of this, uh, you know, uh, this corresponds to what vert, uh, what which kind of vertex? Horizontal molecule corresponds to this thing, right? But for this vertex, uh, the, this and these are the th they are the same, right? And what about this? Uh, again, they, they their contributions for number of mine, uh, left and right they are the same. So you only need to look at those uh, correspond corresponding to this, right? But here, number of uh, by the lemma, number of left arrows. Uh, number, what is the number of left arrows? It goes like this, and and this, right? So A plus D equals number of right arrows will be B plus D. And similarly, uh, if you think about vertical arrows, you get A plus C equals B plus D. From this, you can conclude that uh, A equals B and C equals D. Basically. We will we need this information to talk about the weight. We have some property of the weight so that we can enumerate all possible states. We just want number right now because we want to compute the number of ASMs. Okay. So number of these molecules is equal to number of this type of molecules. But they have the same weight, right? We know that because they are in the same uh, diagonal, I don't know. They are the same uh, diagonal, so they have the same weight also for this. That means we can say the following. By the proposition, uh, the weight of each state each state is of this form is we already know that is z to the n we have that and we have say uh, z and a, a z we only need some powers here but we know that is it's an even number because some molecules have this we have two different types of molecules but they are uh, of the same cardinalities, so if one molecule has C things and the other one there will be C, so 2C, like that. For some integers, integers C, D, non negative. <coughs> and moreover, uh, uh, it's another proposition. Maybe you should, I can write this as a proposition. But 
And in this case, uh, the corresponding ASM has oh, okay. In the in the corresponding ASM, number of minus ones is equal to n to two minus c minus d. So if you know this, c and d, they can recover number of ones like that. Uh, it, it, it's sort of uh, it's easy. So let's say a uh, number of minus ones because this is what we want. Let's say this is one x. Then what is the number of ones in an alternating sign, sign matrix? If this is x, we know that number of ones is always number of minus ones plus n, right? The difference is n. We have one more ones than minus one in each row. So n plus x. Then what is the number of zeros then? Of course, total number of entries is n squared. So n squared minus this and this. 2x minus n. But on the other hand, what do we know? Uh, number of all, so number O corresponds to this uh, molecule, right? This or four rotations of this. So this is going to be equal to 2C and 2D. So that's it. You can solve this equation, then you get the right answer. Now uh, we know this weight. How do we? How can we obtain the no number of ASM? If even if you do, you know this exact formula for the partition function, that does not give you the number. It's just some weight sum. If the weight is very simple, like z to the something, then you can just set z equals one that you get the number. But in this case, we have to think a little uh, more. But there is a way to do that. So, how can we obtain a n from z n? So, the answer is this. We so there are two variables. We set both of them to be the cube root of unity. So this is. 2 to the 2 pi i over 3. So this cube root of unity meaning uh, w square uh, cubed equals 1. And in other words, uh, it's not 1. So, so w will satisfy this. Right. Cube root of unity. Primitive uh, cube root of unity. Then what is this? So we know is it z if you if you remember is this right so it's w both z and a a are w so inverse so what is that it's one and a z is like a z a z inverse so it's w squared minus w minus to the minus two right. But W squared is W inverse. So this is uh, this is W inverse. And this is W. So it's minus 1. OK? So we know that every weight looks like this. So this becomes what? Because we the power is always even. Even though we have minus 1, this will be just 1. So it's like z n to the n. It's a constant. Every state has the same weight. That means the weight generating function just gives you the number, just multiplied by this, this constant. This means if you plug in uh, w, w, then you get w to the n times the number of alternate sign matrices. Okay. 
question? 아, 기억이 안 난다고 여기 여기 이거? 여기요? 어떤 어떤 어, so it was the z n was the generating function. So z n as uh, here. z n uh, sometimes I just omit these parameters but z n has two variables z n a. And z they are used to de define the weight of each molecule. And we sub substitute z equals w, a equals w. Then the weight is constant for every uh, state. So that, that now we can just compute the alternate, number of alternate sign matrices. If we know the formula for zn. Okay? Other question? Okay. Let's go back. Over here. Now, so how do we compute this? But in order to compute uh, this partition function, we will uh, introduce more variables. We will consider multivariates and make it look more complicated. <laughs> but that's somehow necessary. Sometimes, in order to solve some problem, you need to make it more complicated, right? You know, to see more structure. Uh, okay, so let me. So it was this a formula, an explicit formula. Explicit formula for Z, uh, ZA, let's say, uh, was found by either Jin. Probably physicist, 1987, like 30 years ago. So we will find a formula for this. We will. We need to introduce more variables. But I, I will do that. Okay. Uh, right. Let me, let me do this in the next page. Any question before I move on? So remember, we have uh, like scalarized or six vert vertex model. At each vertex, in a six vertex model, we we have some six uh, different configurations, and depending on uh, what this configuration is, we have some weight attached to this vertex. And the weight depends on uh, weight has two variables, z and a. We will uh, kind of generalize the weight. That way, for each vertex, so the, we have n by n grid for a vertex in a sixth vertex model. So we have, uh, we can say that this is in position i comma j if this is in the i row and j column. So each vertex at position i comma j, we modify the weight. By, by replacing z by uh, z i j. So at vertex i, uh, at each vertex we either have weight z, z inverse, or bracket z, or bracket a z. We will just replace z by z i j, depending if the vertex is at i j. So we have more variables. And this is defined to be. Uh, x i over x j, uh, y j. We will replace that z by this, okay? And then this, so we have n n variable set x, and another n variable set y. So it's a kind of vector. So z n x vector x vector y and a. A we don't change a. This is the modified partition function. Okay? Is the definition clear? Just to make sure that everyone understands. 
for instance, let's go back over here. Uh, for instance, mm, okay, let's look at this. What's the weight of this originally? Okay, well, maybe maybe this. Uh, this one. Let's look at this. What is the weight of this thing? So it is uh, in this line. So the weight was uh, z, a z, right? It was originally this, but now we're gonna say no, not this anymore. This i j. Uh, what is i? i is four, fourth row and second column. The weight of this is now a uh, z two four, which is a x squared uh, x sub two over y sub four. We just replace each weight like that. We will have more variables, n variables, and two n variables, x's and y's. Do this for every everything. That's the new modified partition function. Any question? Yes, <laughs> or two. <laughs> I was uh, testing you. <laughs> again, again, it's for two. Yeah, not really. <laughs> Other questions? All right. And then there is a nice formula for that. Theorem. This is the main theorem. Z and this partition function, modified partition function, has a nice formula. Uh, let me write the next line. It's kind of long. X i over y i and product one i j n bracket x i y j a x i over y j over product one i less than j less than n x i over x j y j over y i and determinant of m where m is this. n by n matrix. May look a little complicated, but partition function is usually very difficult to compute, but finding on such an explicit formula is a very useful thing. And this will be enough for us to prove ASM conjecture. And even modified ASM. Okay, uh, let's see. So we know b from the substitution z equals a equals w, you know, you can just say um, x, x is always w, y is always 1, and a equals w, then this will give us this one. So if you know this, you can kind of get the ASM thing. Of course, we have to work uh, with. Uh, we have to be a little careful because there is some. Z there might be some zeros over here, but just just look at this. We, we know that substituting this gives us W to the n times number of alternate design matrices. That gives us. That will prove the ASM conjecture. But what about uh, uh, mod modified ASM conjecture? How do we substitute? So originally, this uh, Kupperberg uh, realized that this theorem can be used to prove ASM conjecture. So he proved ASM conjecture using this. And later, soon, af soon after that, Zeilberger realized that we can also do this 
for a refined ASM conjecture by doing a little different substitution. How do you do that? That's also interesting, so let me, let me show that. Uh, so, like I said, this gives us, this will give us uh, W and A N. Partition function gives us this. What about uh, a refined version? Mm, we substitute X1 to be uh, W T and other axes are W. So, for I greater than 2, equal to 2. So y is set to be 1 and A equals W as before. Then, Zn, what is this? Wait, uh, partition function. Let, we need to think a little bit. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, so just suppose, so if T equals 1, what happens? It's just the same as before. So everything is uh, has the same same way, but uh, okay. Just let me just write this the answer and then explain. So the thing is, it becomes like this: a n comma r. So this is number of ASMs with uh, one in the first row and r column. R minus one over. W R minus one N minus R. Why? Uh, just think about this alternate sign matrix. So we have exactly one one in the first column. So suppose that it is in the rth column. What does that mean? In the corresponding uh, square eyes model. So we have, uh, so horizontal molecule corresponds to one. We have this. And these things to the left of this and to the right of this in the first row, they are fixed. They must be all this way. They have to be connected like that. These are fixed like, like this. And also here, they have to be connected to the, like this. Like that. Okay? So, what is the weight of this? So, it, it goes like this. So, it's AZ. AZ, IJ, to be, to be more precise. These are all AZ. And these are all, right, Z. All Z. Okay? So, how many uh, these mole how many molecules are there over here? So because this is rth position, this is we have r minus one molecules like this, and here n minus r molecules like this. If t were just one, they will they will be the same. But uh, instead of so, it's basically if they are all the same, like w, we will have just alternating sign matrix, but Instead of that, we have Z, uh, like, how can I say? Instead of this, we had, okay, if they are all the same, this would be uh, W, AW. A this would be AW, if they, are, they were all the same. And here, they were all, if they were all the same, it would be, uh, W. Okay. Um, sorry about that. A is already W, so if they are all the same, if like T equals one, then this will be this will be all what? W square to the R minus one. Is this correct? Uh, this is A Z. If they are, 
t equals 1, this would be all just w. Maybe I made some mistake. W and W, maybe these are swapped. Okay, let me, let, let me go back to the de definition. Yeah, I think I swapped these two. Right? Yeah, I think this should be. So let, let, let's do that. So if they are all t equals 1, we, ha we would have this weight for all of this. Right? And also this. But this is not, t is not 1, t is just t. So instead of this, we need what? Uh, a squared t. Instead of this, because the correct, ans correct weight is this. Instead of this, we, we, we should have. Uh, w t n minus r. So if all, if they are all this, the weight will be just this contribution of this will be one. So we have just number, but instead of that, uh, we have this. So we just need to d divide this by this and then multiply this. This kind of replacing each of these by this. Also over here. That's why I had this. So I think I have to correct these things. And maybe I swap these two. So it's like n minus r, n minus r, uh, r minus 1, r minus 1. OK? So we have some equation involving a and r, right? So what now? We need some more in this case, because it's not just the number. Uh, times constant. We have some kind of equation. If we uh, uh, simplify this a little bit, we get, simpli by simplifying this, we obtain things like this. This is a simplification, but after doing that, we have some constant vector and times uh, 1 to n a n comma r r minus one times but let's say this is just uh, p sub r it's a polynomial uh, we have R polynomials, the polynomials PR, R from 1 to N, these are linearly independent. One can check that these are linearly independent. That means, so this is, so A and R are coefficient. So if, if you know this, if you expand this in terms of a linear ex expansion of PR, this must be unique. So there is a conjectured formula for AN, ANR. If you substitute that conjectured formula inside here and then show that this equation is true, then that proves the conjecture. So, uh, so the numbers, let me just write that down, what I said, ANR are uniquely determined. by this equation star. So if you can substitute the conjectural formula inside here and then show that this equation is true, then the pro conjecture will be proved. That is the idea how Zyberg proved uh, the ASM conjecture, refined version, using uh, this. But we will see this in more details later. So next week. But to, to today, we will prove this theorem. And hopefully, if you have time, we will prove, I don't know, ASM conjecture will be, proving ASM conjecture will be left as homework. But <laughs> the important part is this theorem. Any question? OK. 
Okay, then I think it's a good time to take a break. Let's resume at uh, 10.20.